T quotes and I'm back with the second month of the block of the month for the quilters patch which is this book here that you can purchase online It's by editor star of the laundry basket quilts and I actually purchased my book at connectingthreads.com so last time we were here for the first block of the month, I was torn between which one of these backgrounds to pick. And I did ask for your suggestions, and a lot of you did give your suggestion. I think this background won out more than this one. And I have decided that I will be using both of these blocks in the quilt. I will go ahead and tea dye this block. But I'm still not happy with either of these fabrics. So what I've done is purchase something else. For my last month as VP of the Flower Valley Quilt Guild, I had Cynthia Drania of Iowa Star Quilts. And she came to our guild and she, her focus is on neutral prints. And so what I did was she had the exact shades of neutral that I was looking for. I felt like this one was too dark for me. And this one was too white. So I ended up switching out for these fabrics. So I am going to start my block three with this fabric palette. And then I will now go through my stash and see if I have anything that can go with it. If I do, I will add that in. And if I don't, then I, if I need more fabric, I will purchase more fabric at a later date. So these are all half yards. So right now I have one, two, three, four yards. And all of these are half yard prints. And then these two prints on the end, I actually purchased some yardage of these two. So that is my plan. I appreciate all of your help with me trying to decide what it is that I want. I think this is the color palette that I'm actually looking for. So now in the book, we're on block three. Which is this cat block and I am not interested in making a cat block if you are interested in making a cat block you can go right ahead and do that my brother actually had a cat when we were children but I've never had a cat I've never officially had a dog I just had my daughter's dog for a short period of time so what I decided to do was find another pattern so I have some books here that are called Block Magic and Block Magic 2 by Nancy Johnson Srebo. And I have used these books in the past and they're based on the same principle as how the blocks are pieced in the Quilter's Patch book. So in my Block Magic 1 book, I found a couple of blocks that I could use. I had at one point made this block called Tulips Galore. And I don't want to make that one again because I've already made it. And then I did find one other block in here. Let's see if I can. It was a pot. No, it's a it's in a a watering can and it also has some flowers in there but I didn't want to do anything that was applique inside the quilt so what I opted to do is a very basic pinwheel flower because as I was looking at the flowers in the book it looked like they would fit in 
with the flowers that are currently there. So this is what I am going to make for my cat block. You can decide what it is that you would like to make or you can make the cat block if you so desire. So I'm just going to pick one of these backgrounds. It doesn't matter which one. And then of course I have my pile of green fabrics and I probably need to add some more greens in here because I'm sure this isn't going to be enough greens to do the entire quilt and then that way I can be adding in some additional greens and then for my pinwheels I need two colorways twice in a light and a medium or a dark so I'm using pink and I am going to use purple so this would be my color palette for my block number three. And I will start cutting. I've already pressed these fabrics, so I need to go press my background piece and then I will start cutting. I'll probably show you just a little bit of me doing some of the speed cut. everything cut out for my pinwheel flowers block so the next thing that I need to do is I know that I'm going to be making half square triangles and I don't feel like drawing a line so I'm just going to go ahead and slice these once diagonally so when I get to the sewing machine I can just start my sewing process These should be four inch squares. I wanted to make sure before I cut. Well, I do know that I have a directional print. So I am not going to worry about the direction of the pinwheels as I make them. I'm back and I have been squaring up my half square triangles. This is my last one. So I needed a total of eight half square triangles, four in each colorway. So then what I want to do now is make a pinwheel where my half square triangles are all meeting in the center. And then from there I want to take a square that I'm going to stitch corner to corner on each of my pinwheel blocks. So I set this unit out and make sure that I am going to sew diagonally on this line from corner to corner and I've gone ahead and added an extra line because I think I may end up with a one and a half inch half square triangle when I'm finished so anytime I can get at least a one and a half inch half square triangle out of a scrap then I go ahead and do that at the same time so I'll go do that and I will show you my next step perhaps on my design wall I wanted to just pop in right quick to show you what I've done I took those four half square triangles and just sewed them into a pinwheel this block has not been pressed yet 
and then I laid my squares on each corner and then I stitched on both of those lines I did not have to the only line you have to stitch on is from diagonal corner to diagonal corner but I stitched another line so that I could end up with these little mini half square triangles that I have and they will square up to one and a half inches then over here is after I've pressed my blocks open, then you can see what I am left with there. So I will continue with this block and then show you my next step. So I'm back and I have taken my rectangle and put a square on top and I have stitched from corner to corner. And then just like all of my other things, I always go ahead and sew that extra half inch away so that I have an extra half square triangle instead of throwing the cut off pieces away. So I will just cut that down. So I've just cut it off and now I'm just going to finger press this seam open or over shall I say. I just pressed the seam allowance open and now I'm going to add a smaller square into this corner and stitch diagonally from corner to corner and I will not stitch another line on this because this square is already pretty small so I will do this twice and then I have squares that I need to do the exact same technique with putting right sides together I need to stitch down diagonally through the corner and then once I flip this part up we'll have a half square triangle unit but then we're going to take that square again and put up here and we're going to stitch again and I actually need four of these so I will continue sewing these and then I will show you the block layout on my design wall so I'm on my design wall and I have laid out my extra pieces that I cut and then the pieces that I just sewed, those units where I just did flip squares on the corners, go like that. So it's placed with the small square on the inside. And so now I'll just play with which where do I want each of the pieces so now I'm ready to just sew this entire block together so I'll sew these two units together these three pieces together and then sew it to the stem in the middle and then I repeat that process sew that to the top of my flower blocks on each side and then just sew my seam down the middle okay here is my completed block and I'm very happy with the background and I'll just zoom in a little so you can see it Oops, sorry about that. But I wanted a background that had some texture but wouldn't take over the block. And so I will go ahead and put up the remaining blocks so you can see those. So I left my block that I like in the middle. And then my two options that I did with my blocks one and two from last month and just to show you the difference and I'm really liking the middle block now I thought the left block was a little too dark and busy and I thought the right block was too plain and pure so I really like the middle block um, let me know what your thoughts are and I will probably start cutting tonight on block number two for this week which would be block number four I'm back and I'm working on my nine patch daisy block which is this block here has quite a lot of pieces and I have cut everything out and I will say that the hardest part so far in working on this is that you need to make sure that you label or know what order you put your pieces in as you're cutting because you can spend a lot of time just remeasuring pieces so I just tend to stack and cut them in the order 
that they tell you to stack them. I don't actually label anything. But then when I get to the diagrams where it's telling me to pull such and such, I can just basically go through the alphabet and pull what I want. And it's most critical on your background pieces, not necessarily on your color prints. So I am, of course, not sharing any of these cutting instructions because this is a copyright book and also my last block that I showed you the pinwheel flowers that's also a copyrighted book so I don't feel comfortable giving out actual cutting instructions but I'm just sharing with you what I have done and I'm also just making sure that the people who are participating in the sew along know what their assignments are so this block is pieced kind of the same way as the other block, so I'm just going to go ahead and piece my block and then I'll come back at the end. So here are my four blocks. My month one blocks are here, block one and two, and then my month two blocks are here. This is my actual cat block, which I substituted, and my fourth block, which is in the book. So I will see you next month with this block of the month. If you are working on the block of the month and would like to have your block showcased at the end of the video, please send them to me via email and or upload them into my Facebook group, T Quilts, T-E-A-Q-U-I-L-T-S. And you can ask to be a member and I will approve your membership. And I hope to see you next month. Bye-bye for now. Thank you.